maximize your deals, right? It's hard enough to get a deal under contract, but if you can now maximize it, that's more powerful. Welcome to this video, guys. I have a special guest, Alex Youngblood, and I'm so excited to sit down with Alex and talk about how to really transition from doing the assignment of contract into a much more lucrative technique called wholetailing. Now, I've talked about wholetailing here on the channel. Alex is really gonna break down the nuts and bolts of how to wholetail and what that means and how to really get, I think, double, triple, sometimes quadruple your what you would get on an assignment doing a wholetail, which is not much different as far as work and effort. So it's really exciting to learn this technique. We're gonna cover it in detail, all of that and more coming up. This video is brought to you by Flipster, the nation's largest property database, including houses on the MLS and off-market leads like pre-foreclosures and vacant homes. To find your next wholesale or fix and flip deal, start your free trial today at joinflipster.com. All right, Alex. Boom. <laughs> Thanks for sitting down and doing a video with me. I'm excited to talk to you about this topic because I'm personally very passionate about this strategy that you're really implementing well in your business. Um, we had you on the channel where we did your deal hacking strategy yeah. a little while ago, which was yeah. really cool. Really what we did is we took the MLS and you showed how to find our cash buyer and using that MLS data, which was really awesome to see. In fact, it worked. We, we, we were working on one of my deals. We found a buyer and so it was really cool to do. I'll put a link to that video, guys, if you missed it. Uh, Alex calls it deal hacking and uh, it was fascinating. So thank you for that. Yeah. And what we're going to talk about now, though, is we're going to talk about whole tailing. Yes. So for someone listening that maybe doesn't know, I talk about it a lot, but sure. maybe if they don't know, first explain what wholetailing is. So a wholetailing is when a wholesale transaction and a retail transaction have a baby. They collide. They yeah. collide. <laughs> and, and then you have a whole tail. So in wholesale, we simply refer to as like a contract assignment. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, in reality, it could be something that you just buy and resell. Could be a double close. It could be a double close, right. Uh, in a retail situation, we're fixing, we're doing a rehab, and we're putting it back out on the market, and we're trying to maximize, hoping somebody's going to give us that top dollar because we put so much money into it. Right? So sell at the top with a fix and flip. Right, right, right which is still a fine strategy. Mm -hmm. People do really well with it. Um, so in a wholetail, we would take something off the market, maybe do a light fix up. Some even might even call it a prehab. Mm -hmm. So for you know, to give you an example, uh, there was one that we bought for 87. Mm -hmm. I got a wholesale offer, like on a contract assignment for 105. Okay, so a decent wholesale. It's fine, right? Yeah, it's fine. But I, I knew we had a little more mm -hmm. gas in the tank, so yeah. to speak. So I took the deal down. 87,000, I did a trash out. And, and by the way, when you say take it down, you bought and closed on it. I bought it and it. closed on it, So yes. now a, level, a new level of real estate happens here because now you take title, you own it, and you funded it. Yes. So you took it down, I, I call it that as well, you took it down meaning yes. you bought it. Okay, yes, keep yeah. going. we took it down, we bought it, and uh, put it right back on the market, and we got a cash offer for 159, so. Way yeah. more gas in the tank on it. A lot more and meat on all the we did was trash out the property. Yes. And we let the market tell us what the property is worth, which is the magic of the MLS. Uh, explain to people why wholetailing, because wholetailing has been around forever, but right now it's a powerful strategy. And explain a little bit why this is, because we're in a market right now with tight inventory. Yes. Right? And so it used to be like there's, there's wholesale, and then fixed up retail, and yes. then there was this huge spread. Yes. Why has that shrunken so much? Because of lack of inventory. So there's just no inventory out there. So when you when you go and do comparables, and like we were doing with deal hacking, and you look, and you're trying to see where all this activity is buyer-wise, yeah. in the MLS, red, a red indicator means sold. And, um, and green means active, active. and pending yeah. is yellow or orange, whatever, whatever you want to, you know, term that. And when we go and do comps, it's all red. There's hardly anything <laughs> active, you know? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this market is prime for it because now where previously a buyer might have been like, oh, I want something 100% move in ready. I want the granite, I want the HGTV, I want all of that, and I don't want to do anything. Now, mm, 
they want a house to live in. They're just happy to have They're anything. happy to get something mm-hmm. and they're maybe it's at a discount, you know, maybe maybe that's something that appeals to them a little bit better. So the point is because and of, as long as it's financeable. That so that's, that's the key. Term. Let's talk about that in a second. Uh, but so so basically the point is is that because there's no inventory, buyers are overpaying for distressed properties just because they're they they want a I mean, house. They, so, they could be buying it for market value or overpaying. Just depend on you know how you look at it, and and we can talk about also um, one of the points there of looking in markets where properties are selling for over what they're listed. Yeah, it's interesting because what I like to look at is I like to look at okay, who are all my potential buyers if I get a deal. And you know, like fix and flippers are going to pay the least because they need the biggest spreads. Because yeah, they're then you have landlords because they're not going to spend as much, right? And then eventually you're going to get to retail, which maybe is like a live in. I'm going to fix it up myself yes. eventually or whatever. They're going to pay the most. Yes. So by taking down that deal and then putting it back on market, you're getting ten thousand eyeballs looking at that deal. There's going to be that person that says, you know what? I'm going to. I want that. I'm paying. 10% below or whatever, you know, I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. And, and the beauty of it is that you're buyer. using the power of the MLS. Yeah. And it's great because, and this could be a whole nother topic and situation, right? But this completely blows out any situation where you would be worried about, oh, you're assigning a contract and the whole oh, licensure. Because sure. you took it down. You, you you do whatever you want. You, when you close on the property, you fulfill that contract. Whatever you do now is totally up to you. No one can have an argument about it. Exactly. I exactly. love that it's too. It's beautiful. It really like takes all the fear out of it and all the, am I doing something wrong? Or is this going to go away? I mean, I always tell people to become a real real estate investor. So, so it's interesting, Alex. So I love wholetailing too. And so my favorite wholetail is I'll do where and this may sound so funny to somebody, but I'll buy on the MLS and it's a property where it was like a hoarder. Yeah. They're living there yeah. and, the, and the agent didn't really know how to do this right. So like the pictures look terrible, bad lighting, mm. crap everywhere. And then um, like I'll buy that at a discount because it just looks so bad and it shows bad. And then all I do, get those people out, clean it. Yeah. Take new pictures. It looks like a million bucks now yes. with new pictures. Yes. No rehab back up for twice as much as I bought it for. So that's amazing. So you're talking about an on-market property when when you're looking at that yep. situation. That just so, shows really bad. So what would you look for in that situation? Just a lot of days on market and the property hasn't They don't even have to be, day, they, no, they don't have to be a lot of days on market. Just what I'm looking for is a property that shows really bad and it looks 10 times worse than it really is. Okay, okay. So the best is a hoard, hoarder situation. Yes. We're like, in this one, there was like a mattress in the basement in one of the pictures where like the adult kid was living. Oh wow. And just the front yard had stuff everywhere. So yeah. as a as an investor, we're like, "Oh man, that thing needs a rehab." And it kind of did. Sure. As a retail person, you're like, "Man, that house looks nailed. That looks hammered. Like move on to the next." Right. And they just people mentally skip over it cuz they can't see past the junk. Right. That's the, for me, that's the golden retail, uh, yes. wholesale deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's great. I love, I love it and from the strategy of being able to take down your own deals, be your own real estate investor, if we want to, you know, call it that way, yeah. and maximize your deals, right? It's hard enough to get a deal under contract, but if you can now maximize now, it, that's more powerful. Um, some of these, what we'll do is we'll go in and aside from just like a trash out and a cleaning, we'll do a punch list Mm -hmm. because you mentioned something. I want to make sure you cover this. It needs to be mortgageable, which is not a word, but financeable. financeable. Yeah. And why is that? To to wholetail properly, what needs to happen? Well, you know, you know, I guess that's a little bit of an argument because the guy that bought property from us, he bought it for cash. Yeah. I've done those too. And that worked out, right? But sometimes you can get a homeowner to come in there and we can also talk about seasoning in a little section. With FHA? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Dang it. Right? <laughs> I've had those too. But, but a homeowner to come in there and they are going to need a mortgage. A lot of times they don't have the cash to do it. So we got to make sure that this house is functional, right? Because We've it's got not going to pass. Roof, it's not going to pass a mortgage. HVAC, carpet. Like even if there's no carpet on the floor, that's something where they won't finance it for things like that. So we have to make sure we have that basic functionality 
and that there's nothing that would make a mortgage company say. So, so you don't have to rehab it and do new cabinets and all that, but no. you do have to, it, like the plumbing has to work and yes. the roof can't leak. Yes. Right? The so, mortgage company has to know that this is an asset that they're okay collateralizing. So the best hotels are like really dated, but functional. Grandma's house. Yes. Yes. They're the Pink best. Pink bathroom. Green bathroom, yellow bathroom. It's, it still needs a full rehab, but, but it's it looks livable. like grandma cleaned it all the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, grandma's house, the couch has plastic on it still. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. She took care of it. But it's and, livable. And it just was dated and super livable. Yeah. yeah. So then that'll pass a mortgage inspection. Yes. Are some of these you're spending four or five grand doing yes. enough yeah. to get it there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the last ones we did, it actually wasn't grandma's house. It was just somebody that lived there. Um, they got married and they're moving on to another house. The kitchen actually was in really good shape. Yeah. Um, not to 2022 standards, if you want to, you know, the white shakers and all that stuff, mm -hmm. but it still had granite countertops. Floors were clean. We went in there, we redid, or the, the kitchen floor was okay. It was a tile, but around everything else was all like laminate floor, mm -hmm. but it was old and beat up. Yeah. So we went ahead and replaced all the laminate floor, gave the house a paint job. So that cost about six, seven thousand dollars. So that would be a prehab kind of idea yes. there. Lipstick it a little bit. Just yes. just give it a facelift sort of thing. Yes. But you're not going in there and doing all cabinets, new tile, new all this stuff, spending right. thirty grand, forty grand, right. you're spending six. And we bought that for one eighty seven and ended up selling it for two seventy five after six thousand worth. Of yeah. Work. So this is a little the, the key to this is like um when you do your analysis, you've got your ARV, which is your top renovated, yes. and then your wholesale number. Yes. Do you have a formula? We actually follow? sold that at top of the market. Okay, so it didn't even matter. It just just because it was clean, it was livable. Um, no inventory. There is some strategies there with you know what you're going to set your price at because you can go for a really cheap price and hope that it gets bid up. Uh, there's other realtors that I've worked with that are like, now let's put it up there and, and, and let people shoot at it is what we say. Let's see what we get. You mean price it right and right. see. Yes. Adjust or, or, or a touch high and see what mm -hmm. happens. And within this last market of like 2021, we haven't had any issues with it. Now, who knows what we're going to see going forward. But again, that's just adjusting with whatever the market yes, gives you. But there is, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what you think, but isn't there kind of a black eye to a property that's been sitting because you had to adjust the price? I like to get it right off the bat. Yeah, I call it, uh, it's tagged, right? It's yeah. got this mark now yeah. if it sits too long. Like I had a, yeah, I mean, definitely. It sets you up for a discount right away. Yeah, you know? which is why a lot of people would take it down, put it back up, and now the MLSs have stopped letting people do that because they have the cumulative days. Uh, well, they had the cumulative days, but we used to do that with new construction, yeah. reduced by a dollar, or after like 60 days or something like that, we would take it off, put it back on again, it's got new and MLS it still number. shows as new. Yeah. But you can still look in the cumulative days, but you have to know what you're looking for. Some MLSs won't let you do that. Uh, they won't, yeah. they won't uh, let you, the, the, they don't let the day start over. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. people would do that. Yeah. It was, it was great when it worked, <laughs> you know, for new construction. Because with new construction, it was like, why is this property not selling? It's new. You know, but a lot of times it's because we were shooting for the top of the market. Got at it. That point. So Alex, um, obviously, if you go from like doing the assignment to now wholesaling, yeah. funding comes in. Yes. So for a wholesaler that's maybe not yet doing capital and taking down deals, what would you say is the, a smart way to then transition into financing those wholesale okay. deals? So obviously there's hard money, right? And hard money, you're going to pay a decent amount of points. You're going to pay a decent amount of interest. And the key with that is you can be okay with that because it's based on the deal. And if you're going to get in and out fairly quickly, then you take your lumps, if you will, and you and you make exactly. your check and you're good to go, yeah. right? Um, on the other hand, there's private money. Mm -hmm. And I love private money. I've More made a lot of money with private money. And one way that you can use private money or find private money, you know, we talked about deal hacking and stuff like that, is we can go in to transactions that have been rehabbed, go look at them. And I always encourage people to get very acquainted with their public records. Because yeah. if we know it was a rehabbed house using deal hacking, we can go back to the public records, look at the mortgage and deed of trust on it, see who the lender was. The lien holder. And yeah. chat them up and say, hey, I saw you did this deal over here. As the How lender. How did it go? 
Yeah, and then mm -hmm. see if they're interested. Because in guys, on public record, it's gonna give you the history of the liens, yeah. the lien holders, so the yeah. lender, and you see so-and-so lender, right? I love public and records. And they just, that lender funded a fix and flipper, Yeah, has their lien on the property, which means they might do more and lending. And he just got paid off too. Because it was a closed because transaction. Because it was a closed transaction. So maybe his money's ready to go exactly. again. So that's an amazing strategy. Yeah. But your point is, is find the money. Now yeah. it's interesting because um, there's a lender here in Phoenix where I'm from and they do, they have a, a hard money lending program which is specifically for wholetailing. Interesting. Where they fund 100% of your purchase, no points, and, but it's 18% interest, I, <laughs> yeah. but no points. Yeah. And they'll carry that for your 60 day hotel flip. Okay, okay. Um, and a lot of people use it and do it because it's so convenient and sure. easy, no money out. Sure. It's not transactional funding because they'll sure. carry it. Because they're carrying you it, just yeah. make your payments for two, three months. Oh, you gotta make payments. Monthly payments. So, okay. So that's interesting because with private money, you know, you can kind of negotiate your own thing. You might get 8% or something I, more favorable. I do no payments with my lenders until the property sells. So you defer payments yes. and do a lump sum at the yes. end. Yeah. Accumulated interest. Yeah, because I mean, if we had like 10 properties at one time, that'd be a lot of money to yeah. be throwing out there. Yeah. So. But guys, look for lenders that are favorable for this. I talk a lot on the channel about how to get hard money and private money, even how to merge the two to be 100% financed. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and some of these other ideas around getting business credit and things. You have to be thinking about capital if you're ever gonna transition out of just doing the assignment. Yes. Capital comes into play, and but it's just one more thing to learn how to do, it's, it's not that big a deal. But it's a long-term thing. Rather than being in a situation to where you're like, kinda in this for the quick term, or like, I'm just gonna make quick money and get out. If you're really serious about this business, you have to go that route to where you're gonna right. get financing. I don't believe you can actually grow into a multi-million dollar business without being good at ca raising capital, no. without learning how to raise capital. No, it's that next level. Mm -hmm. It really is like, my business changed forever when I finally got private money in place. Me too. Because I could go into a house and be like, well, we'll close tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I shouldn't say tomorrow, but, but, but I got, we can I close got very quickly. I got right. money to back me and that gives you so much confidence. The other day, we literally closed one in three days. Yeah. Literally, from, from Monday when we went to the house, we got the contract Thursday closed. Yeah, we started uh, last year a transactional funding company. Yeah. And we offer it um, to people that can do it. And what it does is it gives people confidence now to if they know they can double close, they can go in really aggressive on their offers and they can show, hey, we got money backing us on this. It just brings a whole nother level of confidence yeah. when you know you have funding behind you. Yes. To get good oh, deals. It's, it's you can powerful. go in with, we can go in at a deep discount and get yes. those good deals. Yes, and yeah. offer confidence. So like one thing with sellers is they want to feel confident and feel your confidence that you are the solution to their problem. And when you have that confidence, it comes through. Oh. Instead of that uneasy feeling or that, oh, yeah, I could get this done. Or you got to really be putting on a front if you don't you know, know what's going on. And I always tell people, you know, tell them the truth, but be confident at the same time. Yeah. And so, Alex, uh, one more thing we'll talk about with wholetailing is if you're doing a price point where the ideal buyer is an FHA buyer. Seasoning. Talk about seasoning. So seasoning, okay. <laughs> seasoning is with lenders is how long the, t the property was titled to the previous owner. Yes. So when you have seasoning, they want to see, depending on the loan, usually this is gonna be FHA. FHA is gonna be the big one that gets you. They're gonna wanna see 90 days seasoning and then you can contract on the 91st day. So it's not 90 days from the last sale to your closing, it's 90 days from the last sale to your contract date. It's, uh, yes. Yeah, 100%. which is, so then you might have another 45 days yes. to close. So yes. that's a, we've had a few of ours, Alex, where we're not in the 90 days yet. So what we do is we contract, we go through appraisals and inspections and stuff like that. And before it gets submitted to the lender, we then will re-sign a new contract because now we're at our 90 days. Yes, yes, we've done that. To try to buy some time. We've done that. It's so maddening because you'll, sometimes we'll rehab a house in two weeks and be back up on the I market. Know, and we have an FHA buyer. Yeah. We gotta wait 90 days. Yes. Oh, yeah. so frustrating. Yeah. 
So in my area, we're in the Virginia Beach, Norfolk area. We're very heavy militarized. So VA loans. So we have VA loans. What's their seasoning? I love VA. No, no, seasoning. no seasoning. Literally, you can buy a house and sell it just like that. Now, with conventional loans, you can do the same. But most conventional don't have that seasoning requirement, do they? No, they don't. Yeah, no, FHA I mean, does. Yeah. I, I would. I don't know. Is it? It's maybe more difficult to qualify for conventional yeah. than it is FHA. Oh yeah, yeah. And maybe it, that's why FHA's three percent down. Yeah. You know, lower credit score, and that's why. Yeah. So what we do with our because I do in Metro Detroit, most of my buyers are FHA. Okay. So we actually will, as part of deciding if we're going to take the offer. We find out their financing. Oh, sure. You can even put it in your listing. No FHA. Yeah. Yeah. And then or we'll, USDA take, or we'll take an well, FHA is... and we'll say, hey, can you go conventional? Yes. You have enough for you a down payment them and we convert them over. And they're not yeah. happy sometimes because they don't want to put more down. And, right. Right. Uh, but anyway, that's so. The caveat to wholetail is if you're in an F, if it's an ideal FHA, and you can Google FHA loan limits. Yeah. And it'll tell you the max FHA. And if your house is priced in, in underneath that FHA loan limit, there's a very high chance your buyer is going to be FHA because the loans are so favorable to them. Right, right. And just know, just know you're going to have to tackle that issue and yeah. maybe carry that property for the 90 days. Yes, yeah. Before and you that, can actually close. That adds a whole other element. Oh yeah, because you're carrying. You just got to be ready for yeah. it. Because you're carrying your holding costs. Yep, holding costs. Which, if you're buying a hundred thousand dollar property and twelve percent interest, a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, so for me, I would probably, if I know I've got to wait out that seasoning period, I might go ahead and do more of a rehab and yeah. see if I can get my my back end number. Because I got to wait anyway. Great, that's a great. That's a great thing to you know process. Because Let's spend a little bit more. See if we can sell it for even higher. Right. We got to wait anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I sense. but I think guys, the big takeaway here is just expand the mindset of just like assignments. Yes. And. I think between all the different strategies of wholetail, fix and flip, right? Uh, the assignment is the lowest paying method of all of those. It is, yeah. It can be. Because you have to leave enough meat on the bone for right. the next guy usually. Right. Yeah. So absolutely. it can be. So this allows you to really maximize your profits per deal. Yeah. And if you can maximize your profits per deal, then you can take that and parlay those into other deals. Let's talk about it. You that's have a the really, flipping snowball. You have a, yeah. I love some of your acronyms. They're the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steal some of them too. No, but uh, <laughs> Alex has this snowball strategy he talks about and briefly run us through this, but it's basically how to take your first fifty, sixty thousand yeah. dollars in in let's say assignments, which or, you can make anyway, like using your strategies, yeah. using basic wholesale, whatever it is, use it, and stack to, up some cash, how to snowball that into a million dollars. Yeah. So let's hear it. Yeah. This so is, basically, this is cool. Yeah. So basically, if you stack up, let's say, two deals of twenty five thousand, now you got fifty thousand to play with, right? If you're within the same year, you know you don't have to pay taxes just yet, right? But Keep that in mind. Yeah, so if you're able to take that $50,000, and maybe you're not in a market where $50,000 houses are prevalent, but every area has its own little arm, Low end. armpit of yeah. the neighborhood, <laughs> if you will, yeah. right? And you could take that and buy one of those houses for cash, your own cash. Like, think about that. It's just a very empowering thing. Yeah. And so you take that 50 k and now maybe that 50K turns into 75K after you get out of it. Wholetailing it. Wholetailing. Yeah. Buy it, relist, right? And then your 75 might turn into 100. And your 100 turns into 150. And your 150 turns into 215. And your 215 turns into so 275. Sell it by another one. Sell it by another yes. one. Sell it by another one. Sell it by another one. Yes. Yeah. And then 275 maybe becomes 325. And 325 becomes four. And on and on and on we go. And it's really not that many transactions if you think about no. it. No. Especially because as you get bigger, then the numbers get bigger. Yes. Like so we had one for 500,000 that we sold. We bought for 520, no, 550, and we sold it for 640. That was 90,000. Yeah. I just did one in Puerto Rico, a wholesale, where I took it down at five and then resold it at 595. Nice. I, I did, uh, I, it, was a, it was a pocket listing from an agent. Yeah. And so to resell it, I found the buyer, but I said, hey, will you handle the whole thing for five grand? He said, heck yeah. yeah. Dealt with everything, got it closed. And um, yeah, so yeah. that was just a straight wholetail. I, yes. didn't, I didn't touch it. Yeah, Not, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it was great. And so, and a lot of people can get overwhelmed when they think about, you know, oh, a million dollars, right? And the key to think about this is it just starts with one deal. Find that first deal and then have that 
change your mindset, feel that it's possible. You can do this. You deserve to do this. You can make this happen. And then from there, you can take it and move it into bigger and better things. It's interesting that that uh, proof of concept feeling, right? Yeah. Like I remember it's been a long time, but I'll never forget my first wholesale deal. It was a yeah. $6,000 deal. And uh, I remember like hanging up the phone. I was driving in like my little pickup truck with my old style cell phone, right? And and uh, he said yes to the number. It was a six thousand wholesale, and I was so ecstatic. Oh, it's the best. I it, I tell people this story. It could have been a million dollars because yeah. I like did it. Yes. And there was this feeling that came over me, like if I can do this once, I can do this again and again and yes. again. Yes. Yes. And my confidence just exploded, and it was like I and I just never looked back. I didn't. Yeah. That's Not once look thing. back from that day forward, right? Yes. And so then that's from amazing. There you went to wholesale houses full time. That's right. <laughs> wow, I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, guys, if you're not on Facebook, which of course you're on Facebook, make sure you join Alex's Facebook page, Whole Wholesaling Houses Full Time. It is the largest community of wholesalers. Uh, you guys do phenomenal, Alex, on there. I, I love your so much interaction, community going on. So check that out. Alex has a YouTube channel as well. You put some content out, out there, sometimes. Yeah. We'll put that link below. But uh, Alex, I, thank you for all you do for the community. I feel you and I really relate a lot because you're, you're a dad, big family, and I just really appreciate the conversations you and I can have yeah. and the friendship we have. It's a lot of fun. Super down to earth too, and I love that. Um, in Virginia area, but guys, be sure that you're learning from Alex. He's got some great ideas, great strategies. He's got his ear to the pavement so he knows what the market's doing and, and constantly learning, adjusting, growing, developing. Yeah. And that's that's what this game is all about. It is. Because it might be different tomorrow. Yeah. So we got to constantly adjust. So And that Wholesale House is full-time wasn't just a plug. That's, <laughs> that's where the name of the group came yeah. from is when I said to myself, could I Wholesale House is full-time? full-time. Just like you had that yeah. same thing that came over yeah. you there. And that was it. It was all about how do I get to this full time? Yes. How yeah. do I get out of this job? I yeah. hate 